my life has kind of been turned upside down. Uh, just with on over a little really my mind is on the pillow. And uh, I don't want you to become a victim of the circumstances. Um, but I on Sunday um, was praying already for Tuesday and what like I felt um, I've just uh, I've been I guess I tried to develop Tuesday evenings um, for this year. And uh, I looked over in my office, and it's desperately needs me to go in and work on it. Desperately, desperately, desperately. And, uh, so I need to go and, and uh, purge, 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 purge. But in the middle of needing to purge, I looked over and I saw something that we did some years ago when beneath the dust. I thought how appropriate for the beginning of the year. And I don't intend to use it as a series. Um, I believe it was way back when Brother Craig and Sister Rachel first came. How long was that been? So I tried six years. six years. So it could be five years ago. Um, thinking somewhere maybe around the five year mark. Um, we did a series and uh, I just I just want to look at it in kind of a brief way as a reminder here at the beginning of this year. And uh, in fact, our minds can forget about it. Um, but I want us to remember, and even as you're driving down the road, I want you to think about it. Some of you may remember when we talked about guardrails, guardrails in our life, and what they mean. And uh, so we have some, some new, new folks, and so it's new to you, refreshment to others. But let's look at it quickly. Not just quickly, but I'm not going to look at it in a series. But let's look at it intently and in depth and how that we can apply it to our lives. So guardrails. You know, whoever designed guardrails does a pretty awesome design because they're designed to keep uh, vehicles to from straying in off limits or in dangerous areas. And so they, they're designed, and we need guardrails in our life. And, and so uh, there's, there's guardrails used in a couple of different places. And I pulled out my signs, and I can't believe they're still together. <laughs> and so they're, they're looking at, just for God, I, I at one time had more creative juices flowing through me. These days I throw it over to your lap. Uh, but, but, but in those days, um, before God blessed us with you, so the first sign that you may come on when you look at, uh, at guardrails, you may see this sign, and as you look at this sign, it, it will remind you of a few things, but, but it's designed to remind you that there's a bridge ahead, that things are narrowing down, and there's a bridge ahead, and uh, it, it, there's just a place where there's very little room in the margin for error. I mean, you gotta be careful. The bridge maybe isn't as wide as the road, the route that you've been traveling, so it narrows down. And so uh, uh, there are going to be bridges that we cross in life, and it's important that we have guardrails in our life. We'll talk more about guardrails uh, in the spiritual sense in a minute, but just journey with me in, in, in the physical sense. So we, we have these guardrails, and there's little room for error in the margins of these. Think about that. When you cross the bridge, uh, it, it tightens down. And then we have these guardrails when there is a, a, a median, it's placed as a median, uh, a median in between two uh, different uh, uh, lanes of traffic which are going in opposite direction. So to bring safety, they will place guardrails in the middle of these two opposing lanes of traffic. Pretty simple, right? Pretty much easy to understand. I'll lay them up here, kind of on the down the shoe. And then you have on those places where there are curves. So there's curvy areas and you're going around a bend and thank God that there are guardrails. That, that, that are there. And, uh, you know, they're, they're there when there is unexpected changes that we may encounter. 
when you say that's what it is, the mediums where there's unexpected changes where we may encounter them. Growing up in West Virginia, a situation I can probably very much relate to that. Our roads are not as straight as your roads. They are designed to wind through the mountains and up the hills. And so, thank God for guardrails. And guardrails are not located where dangerous places are, but they're located on the inside or on the safe zone of dangerous places, right? So when you drive down the road, you know, they don't, they don't put the guardrail down over the, the embankment, but they place it along the road so that you don't go over the embankment where it's a dangerous place. So they're, they're, they're located in a very safe place so that there is a margin uh, 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 for error. And, and, and if you have an error, you crash into the guardrail, but you are still safe from that embankment or that very dangerous place. So guardrails are really a very unique uh, uh, behavior. And so guardrails, as well in our life, they become standards of behavior that, 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 are, that are drilled into our conscience by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God. And we place them there. We place them on the inside margin of danger so that if we hit them, we won't find ourselves in a very dangerous place. And so guardrails are important. I think it's challenging even here at the beginning of the year. What are your guardrails? Where are the guardrails of your life set up? What are those safety zones that keep you from straying into sinful places that are dangerous for us spiritually? So we want to place the guardrails. God's Word places them. Our church may place guardrails. Uh, but, but ultimately, we have uh, ourselves through the Word of God in a place of prayer where we place the guardrails that keeps us from danger. So guardrails, uh, they, 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 they're like, uh, 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 when, when you hit them, it reminds you, whoa, be cautious. You don't want to break the rule altogether. You don't want to get hurt. And it may cause some damage. None of us like to hit the guardrails with our vehicle, right? Because it can bang it up, it can damage it. But it's much better than what it would be if we would go over the embankment or we would hit someone head on or, or, or whatever the dangerous area is. It's better to hit the guardrails than, than to, to go where there could be a very life-threatening uh, injury to us if we move beyond the guardrails. And so guardrails, they really function as warning signs. And uh, there's some damage that's done when you hit, but, but the, uh, the, the impact is not a big crash. Folks, we don't want to have a big crash in our life spiritually. So that's why it's important to have guardrails in our lives. And so I don't want to sin, so I place guardrails up on my life to keep me from a crash of sin. So, thinking, you may think about some guardrails, and I may ask you a little bit later in closing, when we get to the closing, but, but uh, we don't want to revert back to a sinful lifestyle. We don't want the sinful nature to overtake us. So we place guardrails up to keep us from going there. You see, there are guardrails that need to be placed. There are catastrophes and things that can happen in life because there's not guardrails. If there were guardrails, people wouldn't have to worry about bankruptcy. If there were guardrails that were set up, folks wouldn't have to worry about a life of affairs or addiction or violence or, or uh, lashing out with anger or cheating or stealing or any type of sin if there were guardrails set up prior to those things happen. You see, don't believe a lie. We need guardrails in our lives. The devil's very good at lying. He'll tell you, you don't need those boundaries and you don't need those guardrails. But that's where it all started in the beginning is when he lied to Adam and Eve. Lying and saying, God placed these boundaries here, but you don't need them. And when God came by, what did they say? We're naked and shame. God didn't tell them that. They knew that because they had, they had had a major crash because the guardrail was down. Once they feared and they honored and they respected what God had told them to do, but, but, but through the lie of the enemy. And the devil, he doesn't come with, with, with this pitchfork and these pointy ears and this pointy tail and with the flames of hell with them. He doesn't come that way. He comes, the 
Bible says, as an angel of light. So he comes very deceptive. He comes very craftily. And he wants to destroy us. He wants to destroy our life. He wants us to have a crash. He wants us to be hurt. He wants us to feel the pain and the disappointment and even the death of what a crash will do to us. But God says, wait a second. My word sets up guardrails and standards and boundaries. And in a place of prayer, you need to set those up. And the church is helpful in setting up those boundaries uh, that, that help you live a healthy life spiritually. And so, in Ephesians chapter number 5, if you would turn there tonight, verse number 1 through verse number 12 really gives us um, instructions that are, that are pretty hard hitting. He said, follow God as your children, walk in love. Uh, 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 he said, uh, he, he, he talks about uh, 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 but fornication and cleanness, uh, covetousness, let it, uh, let it not be once named among you as saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking, jesting, uh, 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 which are, are, are not convenient, but rather giving thanks. And he just goes on down uh, through this list of, of, of unfruitful works of darkness. And he, he, and he commands to put on a, a, a light and, and, and to walk in fellowship with God. And as Paul really uh, gives us an outline, what he's doing is he's giving boundaries. And, and in verse number 15, and I know that I've said this before, and, and let it sink in, but someone read verse number 15, if you will. And even... Well, we'll just do 15 right now. See then that you work certain walks or perspective, not as fools, but as wise. So he said, watch then that you walk circumspectly. Do you remember many years ago when we did this, I gave you uh, an illustration of what that meant? I gave you the illustration of me growing up on a farm. And going out in the pasture. In the summertime, we would put our cows out in the pasture. And uh, 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 after we cut the hay, they would go out there and they would eat. And uh, uh, they would eat. And then as any human uh, or any, any life organized, you know, there's, there's a waste product that is given. And they would eat, but they would also allow their waste products to be just placed in the field randomly. And so when we would, as, as kids, you know, it's, it's easy to be, you know, in those days listening to your Walkman handle, we didn't have iPhones or iPads or iPods, you know, Walkmans, uh, whatever it may be. And we didn't have that for a long time. I really didn't know too much about electronics. It was just easy to be, uh, your mind wandering somewhere, not, and uh, and you smelt it and you felt it. Right? So, you know, walking circumspectly, you know, it's there. There are dangerous things. There are uh, places we don't want to step in life. And so, and so you, you have to be careful circumspectly. He said uh, not, not, not just haphazard, but we are to watch where we are stepping. And so as believers, you know, it's a challenge as a parent. You, I want to walk in a way that uh, models Christ and, and lots of other things on top of that. But, 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 but in our Christian walk, we have to watch where we are walking. There needs to be guardrails. There needs to be boundaries. There needs to be attentiveness. And, and he says, not as fools. Someone who, who doesn't avail himself uh, to, to, to walk in a way that's pleasing to God. God wants us to walk honoring Him. And so here at the beginning of this year, what a better message to hear that we need to put boundaries and you need, we need to watch the way that we walk, the way that we conduct ourselves. So we'll read verse number 16. Redeeming the time, all those days are you. He said, redeeming the time because the days are evil. If I could rephrase this and say redeeming the time because you live in dangerous times and in dangerous places. That's what evil is. We live in evil times where people don't want godliness and righteousness. Where, where the world is living one way, the church is living very close to them. 
And then Christians who have been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, and thought, we don't walk that way. We walk differently. Verse number 17, if someone would. So, be not unwise because time is precious. And we are, really, when you think about this, let this radiate in your mind. We are only given a few short days to do and make choices that will bring eternal consequences. Our lives really aren't that long. And we have to utilize them with all of our choices because they'll bring eternal consequences. Being wise at the time. And he says, understanding what the will of the Lord is. The will of God is, is that we live righteously and that we live so I want to get ahead of myself. But we know what God's will is for our life. There are things in the Word of God that are lined up to how we need to live act, and walk, and talk, and spend our time with There are other measures and weights in our life that we spend seeking God to ask Him, what are the personal things you have for me? So there's a universal set of standards that God has for us, but there are personal, tailor-made things that God wants to do in our lives. And it's exciting at the beginning of this year. And verse number 18, what does he say? He said, be not drunk with wine wherein there is excess. So he's talking about wine in this particular scripture, but he's using it in a broad spectrum because he said, when you when when folks partake of that which is uh, 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 wine, uh, it can be that of indulgence. He says, don't 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 lean toward the principle of indulgence, which means a lack of control. But make sure you have guardrails in your life that doesn't lack control. But you allow the principles of the Word of God and the Spirit of God to control your life. And so, Sister uh, uh, Rachel, I'm going back to even your testimony tonight and how the Lord's speaking to me. So really, there are boundaries of how we should allow ourselves to be. I need to live in those boundaries. You need to live in those boundaries, each of us, so that we're honoring to God. Because when we go outside the boundaries, we indulge in things that is not pleasing to God. The unfortunate part is most of the, the Christian world is saying, how close can I live to sin? How close can I get there and still make it to heaven? I'm not saying all Christians, but I'm saying a lot of the Christian world is saying how close that they can live and how far they can push the envelope. When God says there needs to be boundaries established, you have one life and there are fleeting days with eternal consequences. And it shouldn't be how close you can, you can live to say that's a wrong question and, and, and it's scary to think about. Amen. But you need to be asking God, God, what is your will for my life and how can I live in boundaries, not without control, but how can I control and live in a place that is God-honoring and reverent to you? That model prayer of our Father which art in heaven, how would be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Those are boundaries, not my will, but thy will. We sometimes in our lives never ever grow up. I'm speaking physically, some maybe, but spiritually. Do you know, as a child grows, and, and the time of a child develops, you'll find that that child will no longer be self-indulgent. 
Uh, uh, but, but, but it being learns to become uh, conscious and aware of the world around them and not only live to self, but, but, but live to others. That is part of natural human development. If it's part of that which God reflects to us in the spiritual, we need to learn that growth means I don't live to myself. But the boundaries are set and I live for the will of of God and for heaven. That's powerful for to me tonight. Now, there are boundaries that earthly parents will teach their children as well. They're done in different ways. You know, um, you know, I, I think that when we had children, you know, we put those little plastic things in our sockets. Before then, we didn't really worry about that. If you want to worry about that, that's fine, but we didn't. And, um, but, but that's what down to there. Can't go there. And locks on the cabinets. Locks on the refrigerator and freezer. Locks on the basement door. A buzzer on our front door when they learned to open up the childproof lock that was there. What are all these things? They're boundaries. And that's what good parents do. Now there are other boundaries as well. I'm just simply using those as, as just a reference point. But, but you can clearly understand. If earthly fathers know the importance of giving boundaries to their children, how much more does our heavenly father know about giving boundaries to us? God is not wanting us to keep us from something because uh, he, 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 he doesn't want us to enjoy. God knows that there are areas where there are Christ areas. There are areas where we can be heard. And he says, I place it on the median of where there is a safety zone because I love you and I want the best for you. And I know that your life is more than just a few days, but it will result in eternal consequences. And where you make choices in this life is where you will spend eternity. So make them wisely. And I'm doing everything I know to do to make you make wise choices because I'm setting the guardrails up. How awesome of a father do we have? Thank God for guardrails. Some of you know and have been to where I, I, I grew up. When I was growing up there in the mountain of West Virginia, we didn't have guardrails. And uh, particularly on one road that is still used mostly for, uh, well, well it's, 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 it's for a lot of coal trucks and, 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 and bigger trucks transporting things in and out of the mountain. That, that road still, in many places, many places, does not have guardrails. Some of the very, very dangerous places, it does. I was talking to my mom a few weeks ago, and as I was preparing, I was thinking about this. And she was talking about someone, someone who passed away. And I said, oh, I didn't know that. What? She said, yeah, it's been a couple of years. Um, a lady that had, uh, her husband was buried in the mountain where my dad is, not far from my home, in the cemetery. She'd come up on Christmas morning to put something on her husband's grave. And they're not sure what happened, but when she was going down, back down the mountain, it, it, there was a very, very steep grade and a very, very sharp turn. And for whatever reason, she uh, didn't make the turn and just drove straight down and went down over an embankment and her vehicle caught on fire. And uh, unfortunately, because of that incident, her life was taken. Could it have been different if there was a guard or something? The impact on the guardrails could have been great. But I believe her life could have been spared if the result was from the accident alone. God loves us. And God knows where every dangerous area of life is. And he puts guardrails up. And he wants us to live in the guardrails and keep them. God didn't just say, don't be drinking wine wherein there is excess, be not drunk with wine wherein there is excess. But he said, be filled with the Spirit. 
He offered us a better alternative, being filled with the Spirit of God. And he went on down to say, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, that part of us, when we are filled with the presence of God, the guardrails are up, and we are meditating on the goodness and the greatness of God. That's what we're singing, and that's what we're praising. Guardrails are uh, made up of three things. They're made up of biblical standards, things that are direct from Scripture. They're things that we look and we see in the Scripture speaks to us about how we should live our life. Love and forgiveness, um, integrity, Sexual purity, uh, not coveting. The Word of God is set up with all these boundaries. And then as a church, there are boundaries that we establish as well. It's not that we dictate someone's lives, but, but we say these are the standards if you're going to be on our platform. These are the standards if you're going to be a Sunday school. We, we set those standards. And then the third, I think it's a great one, is our personal convictions, where we spend time with the Lord and in the Word of God, where God speaks to us, and it becomes something that is a conviction to us. When I was growing up, my parents had a strong, a strong conviction of we didn't ever go out to eat on Sunday. My folks felt like um, Sunday was the Lord's Day, a day of rest. We didn't go um, to the store. We didn't do a lot of things. Sunday was really a day that we didn't want to cause someone else to work because we felt that all should be given the privilege to rest and be in the house of God. Now, was that something that the Lord, that was a personal conviction that God had given them, that they preferred to raise our families that way. And, uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate the values that they gave to me in that. My, 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 uh, my parents had good values, and they had convictions, and they set guidelines down. Now, don't look back and moan and groan. I look back and I'm appreciative for what my parents did, because there was an alignment that they loved God as well. They didn't do it to be mean, but it was a, a guardrails. You know, my mom and dad, we'll maybe talk about this next week, and then we're going to wrap this up. My mom and dad monitored who my friends were and where I went and how I spent my time. There were guardrails that were set up. Not because they were mean parents, but because they wanted to see the best in me. And they wanted to see me love God most of all. And so they were set up. And so, boundaries in our life. Um, submitting yourself one to another in the fear of the Lord. You know, in a balanced church, there will always be new converts who maybe uh, are, are just beginning to understand the lifestyle convictions. But there should be a church, folks as well, that have those convictions. So we are, we are as a church, we are growing by those who've grown, those that are new, guard in our life. I'm going to stop right there. There's other things that I could say, but... Understanding the dark realms in our life are set so we don't mess up. Does anyone have any thoughts, dark realms, things you want to share, questions you want to ask?